Welcome to Lesson 14b, Cunningham Correction Factor. In this lesson, we define mean free path and a non-dimensional parameter called the Knudsen number. These are important in analyzing the drag force on very small particles. We'll also define the Cunningham Correction Factor, which is used to more accurately calculate sphere drag. I'll also do an example problem. By way of introduction, for very small particles, especially submicron particles, as we often encounter in air pollution problems, the mean free path lambda of the air is important. Why? Consider a small spherical particle of diameter dp. p stands for particle, and this particle is in a flow of air. If dp is much greater than the mean free path lambda, in this diagram suppose lambda is very small, compared to dp. We treat the air as a continuum, which means we don't have to consider individual air molecules. It's just this fluid surrounding the particle. The no-slip boundary condition applies then, as does the Navier-Stokes equation, with standard definitions of viscosity, density, etc. But what happens if dp is of the same order of magnitude as lambda? Then the air is not a continuum. Instead, we have what's called free molecular flow, and the no-slip boundary condition does not apply, nor does the Navier-Stokes equation. I'll sketch this case here. Again, we have a particle of dimension dp with some average speed v approaching. But now we must consider individual air particles, or air molecules, that have somewhat random velocities, and some of these air molecules hit particle and bounce off. Lambda is defined as the average distance between molecules. Unlike this case where we have friction drag along the walls and pressure drag, the only drag we have here is when an air molecule hits the solid particle, imparting some momentum to it, which translates as a drag. For this free molecular flow condition, the drag force is due to air molecules hitting the particle and is not directly due to viscosity mu. And we expect Fd to be smaller for the same particle size and same average speed. For free molecular flow, we need to correct for these free molecular effects. This is where we introduce something called the Knudsen number, which we define here as the ratio of mean free path to particle diameter. The Knudsen number is a non-dimensional parameter just like Reynolds number, so it has dimensions of one and no units. Here's an equation for lambda, the mean free path. The dimensions of lambda are length, since it's an average distance between air molecules. Typical units are microns. Here's a rule of thumb for this Knudsen number. If Knudsen number is small, for example less than about 0.1, dp is greater than lambda, so these are relatively large particles. This would be similar to this first case that I described here, where we treat the air as a continuum. So this case is the continuum flow regime, and no drag correction is necessary. For example, for creeping flow over a sphere, we showed in a previous lesson that CD was 24 over Reynolds number, so this is valid for small Knudsen number. If KN is not small, in other words, when DP is approximately the same order of magnitude as lambda, or DP is smaller than lambda, then by definition KN is not small. This is the free molecular flow regime, where free molecular effects are important and a drag correction is necessary. We will have to modify CD. And as I said, we expect CD to be smaller. We do this modification with a correction factor called the Cunningham correction factor, given the symbol capital C. Namely, we use CD divided by C in place of CD. I'll define this Cunningham correction factor in a minute. First, I want to show the summary of equations for air at any pressure and temperature. We have the ideal gas equation with a specific gas constant for air in any of these three groupings of units. This viscosity equation is the Sutherland equation, where these are the constants in the equation that appear here. This is the equation for mean free path for air and Knudsen number, which I showed above. So this grouping of equations is valid for air at any pressure and temperature. And notice that we need mu, density, and pressure to calculate lambda. And we need lambda then to calculate the Knudsen number. I'll do a quick example where we calculate the density, viscosity, and Knudsen number for air at SATP, which means standard ambient temperature and pressure. The pressure is standard atmospheric pressure, and the temperature is 25 degrees C. In all these equations, we must use K, not C. Always use absolute temperature. 
In this problem, we want to calculate the density, dynamic viscosity, kinematic viscosity, mean free path, and Knudsen number for particles of various diameters. I duplicated the equations here, and we plug in the numbers to do our calculations. Density, P over RT, a unity conversion factor, and we get rho for air at SATP. For mu, we use the Sutherland equation, mu s, times the ratio of temperatures to the 3 half power, and then this grouping of terms. You can see that the reference temperature is the same as SATP, and thus these two terms are 1, and thus mu is 1.849 times 10 to the minus 5 kilogram per meter second. Recall the kinematic viscosity is mu over rho, which gives us 1.562 times 10 to the minus 5th meter squared per second. Here I compare with the values given in the appendix. At 25 degrees C, the density is 1.184, which agrees with this. The viscosity is 1.849 times 10 to the minus 5 with the same units, and the kinematic viscosity also agrees with our calculations. In fact, these are the equations that we used to generate this table. Now back to our example problem. We also want to calculate lambda and Knudsen number. We use this equation that we had provided for lambda. We plug in our viscosity, our density, and our pressure. We need a conversion factor for Pascal's and another one for Newton's. And we get lambda equals 6.704 times 10 to the minus 8 meters. I'll write this as 0 0.06704 microns for air at standard ambient temperature and pressure. This lambda is very small, but for submicron particles, in other words, particles that are smaller than a micron, the free molecular effects become significant, as was mentioned previously. Now let's calculate the Knudsen number. We'll look at various particle diameters. So I'll make a table of particle diameter in microns and Knudsen number. We'll calculate Kn for these five values of dp. For the first one, we get 6.704. And since diameter is going up by a factor of 10, Kn goes down by a factor of 10, since dp is in the denominator and lambda is a constant at SATP. So these are the answers to this example problem. Notice that as dp goes up, Kn goes down. Now finally, we can define the Cunningham correction factor C. Here's the equation for Cunningham correction factor. You see it's a function only of Knudsen number. So once we calculate Kn, we can calculate C easily with this equation. And as I said, it's a kind of fudge factor which goes in the denominator. And we use CD over C in place of CD everywhere where that we have a CD. My high school physics teacher taught us not to use fudge factors. Well, BJ, this is engineering, not physics. Engineers like fudge factors. Oh. Thank you, sir. Note that the Cunningham correction factor applies to spheres. If we have non-spherical particles, we usually calculate some kind of equivalent spherical diameter so that we can use the Cunningham correction factor and the drag coefficient for a sphere. This is similar to what we did with pipes when we defined a hydraulic diameter. If we plot this equation for C as a function of dp, and I'll use a log scale for particle diameter, and these are in microns. By the way, C itself is non-dimensional. The curve looks something like this. C decays as dp increases, and it levels off at C equal 1 for large dp. For example, at 0 0.01 microns, C turns out to be about 22.79, which is significant. The drag force on these 0.01 micron particles is about 23 times smaller than what we predict using CD equal 24 over Reynolds number, since we correct CD as CD over C instead, and this factor appears in the denominator. Let's do another example problem. It's the same as the previous problem, air at SATP. Here we want to calculate Cunningham correction factor for these same five particles. I added a third column to the previous example results, and I'll show that here. Here's a column of Cunningham correction factor as a function of dp, where we calculate c based on the Knudsen number. As I had plotted, c goes down as particle diameter goes up. So as particle diameter increases, Knudsen number decreases, and c also decreases. But it doesn't go to zero. It levels off at one. Even though for large particle diameters, C is not very relevant, I advise you to always include C in all your calculations of sphere drag, regardless of particle diameter, especially if you use software and you have CD replaced by CD over C. 
it doesn't hurt to do this calculation even when C does not have much effect. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.